all I ever wanted to do as a kid was draw and I've devoted my whole life to enabling me to earn a living from drawing. Yeah, I can plot my whole development as like who I was obsessed with. You know, I kind of went from Richard Scarry and then I went and got into Tintin and Hergé. And then I discovered 2000 AD, which was a British comic in the kind of 1980s, and Judge Dredd. And then I discovered Raw Magazine and Gary Panter. Those people were the sort of people who kind of kept driving me forward. And at the same time, I was always into art, it's kind of contemporary art and fine art and books as well. But in terms of kind of comics and graphic art, it was always Richard Scarry, Hergé, Mike McMahon, who was my best artist for, for Judge Dredd, and Gary Panter. I was at college doing my degree. I had a conversation with my tutor and one of them just said, you try to be somebody else and, you know, what does all this mean? And eventually it kind of got through to me and I was like, all right then, fuck you, I'm going to do something really different. And I went out and I just did loads of observational drawings of car park and landscapes, a lot of skate spots, because I was into skating, weird urban things. And then I'd go back to my flat and make these big airbrush drawings. And they were really different because they were my own kind of language that I worked out. And it was my own interest as well because it was things that I got into through skateboarding that I brought into my work. And after doing those things, that kind of led me to us thinking about cartoons and characters. I like the idea of a character that's just completely bland. And I don't generally draw them in the, quite in this way. I tend to do them more kind of graphics or computer images. So this character with the beak, I've got a kind of weird idea for a story. He's like a version of me, I suppose, in a weird way. But I think he's like an artist. This guy commissions this guy to sort of decorate a weird like Sistine Chapel. And then he draws all these demons on the walls and gets consumed by them and sucked into like a weird existence. And then every so often I start thinking about the policeman because I just think there's something about him as a character that people really get. But it's funny, he seems a very different kind of character to draw. It's more like drawing a cartoon character, whereas the other ones, I don't have to think about it so much. But I've been really making an effort to draw in this more fluid, quick way. Sometimes, you know, I'm there in my studio doing my thing and I don't realise what effect I do has on the outside world so it's nice to be asked you know and I was thinking what is Stussy you know what can I do that's for Stussy that's not what I do for Ramos that's a little bit different and I was thinking of the kind of cultural things that Stussy stands for and it's that you know hip-hop culture and skateboarding and things and you know I'm conscious that I'm 40 this year and I'm not living in that cult you know, I was really obsessed with skate culture for years you get older you know you have kids you get a job doesn't surround you so much and then I was just thinking about those cultures in a kind of more dispassionate way and so I like the idea that there was these images were kind of almost telling people what to do in a kind of silly way. If you're a painter you want someone to buy your paintings. If you're a proper painter like having to support a family you're dependent on selling them so in a way you're still making a commercial object it just happens to be one of one. So all the things I do are commercial. I think some of them are more driven by, purely by my artistic vision. And those are the things that I probably like the 